Let's get some more reaction to the thousand troop surge that has been announced by Governor Perry. Uh, joining us on 710 KURV from Ranch Country at the checkpoint, Falfudias, Texas. Dr. Michael Vickers has ranch, ranch property out there, and he sees the problem of illegal immigration on a daily basis. Dr. Vickers, it is an honor. Welcome to the show, sir. Let's set the scene properly. Uh, tell me about your experiences, sir, up in Falfurius when it comes to illegal immigration. Tell me about your property and what you see on a daily basis. Well, uh, you know, we have constant traffic, uh, and it's been that way for a long, long time, every night, every day. But here recently, uh, you know, the traffic has subsided mainly because of the increased uh, surge of DPS troopers down in Hidalgo County and Star County and uh uh, that's actually helped uh, cut the traffic down significantly okay. uh, so far over the past few weeks. Um, you know, we're seeing a lot of small groups, two or three, maybe uh, the biggest group being five, probably because they're able to slip through uh, the DPS without them noticing a, a real, real heavily uh, uh, packed vehicle with a lot of people in it. Okay. And, uh, you know, they're able to, to, to slip through and uh, get dropped off. And we're seeing this. Further west, uh, the groups are get, are bigger. I mean, the traffic is still steady. Uh, to substantiate that, uh, you know, uh, the uh, medical examiner in, in Laredo uh, does all of the autopsies uh, for Brooks County and Jim Hall County, and which is west of us. Okay. And uh, you know, the past couple of weeks, uh, Jim Hall County has has had as many uh, deaths as we have, or maybe even more oh so. So uh, the, the, the DPS operations, along with the Border Patrol, and have moved that traffic further west, okay. the heavy traffic. So, right. how, does, know, how uh, does illegal immigration affect you, Doctor, you and your property and your colleagues and friends and neighbors up in ranch country? Well, he, I mean, there's this constant tr uh, destruction to our property, to our water sources, to our fences, and, and uh, especially along US-281, uh, a lot of ranchers in our county cannot... Run cattle on the on the along the highway because of the fact that the fences are constantly being torn down. This is in the drop off zone south of the checkpoint, and also in the pickup zone north of the checkpoint. So you know, for a 25 uh, mile stretch there, but south of Fal Furious, uh, where that checkpoint is located, uh, it's 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 a constant battle to keep your fences up. Have you ever encountered, spoken with any of these folks that are traversing? Your property or neighbor's property? Who are these folks? Where are they from? Do Do you know? Have you? Oh talked? yeah, we, we we come into contact with them all the time, a lot, especially north of the checkpoint. By the time a lot of them get north of the checkpoint, their coyote guide has already left them out here, and uh, you know this is partially responsible for a lot of the deaths that occur. You know, they get uh, lost uh, out here, and we we encounter them. I mean, there's a lot of desperate people coming through here, and desperate people do uh, desperate things to survive or to to uh, get into the country and get to the destination they're headed. Yeah. And this is the type of uh, situation we're facing every day. So we're constantly being vigilant because a lot of these people are violent. Some of them have criminal backgrounds. There's a huge gang presence in a lot of these groups. So uh, it's a challenge every day to to, to be vigilant and, and be aware of okay. your surroundings because you never know when somebody's going to step out. From Furious, Texas, at our checkpoint here just north of the Rio Grande Valley, Dr. Michael Vickers, ranch owner, joining us on 710 KURV. Dr. Vickers, Tim Sullivan here. So what do you do when you make contact with some of these groups? Well, you know, a lot of times we, we give them water. I mean, a lot of times they... Uh, well, they haven't been able to find a windmill. Uh, usually they start out with a gallon of water, but on a 105-day heat, walking through this sand and this desert and this harsh terrain, you know, a gallon is not enough. They really need four or five gallons, and, of course, they can't carry that. By the time so, that you, know, you come in contact water, with them? We, we call the Border Patrol and try to get them apprehended. Yeah. Uh, by the time that you come in contact with them, are they lost or are they on a on a specific path? Most of them that we encounter are already lost. Wow. Uh, the ones that have a guide still with them uh, avoid us and uh, uh, usually make it through unless uh, the Border Patrol can detect them uh, with other means like cameras and sensors and things like that. So, uh, you know, a lot of the people that we encounter are already lost. Are you, um, do you favor the deployment of the National Guard soldiers uh, at this point in time? Oh, absolutely. I think it should have been done two or three years ago. I mean, the, the surge in traffic uh, and an illegal alien activity and human uh, 
smuggling has quadrupled over the past two years. How will uh, the soldiers, from what I understand, Governor Perry wants to put them close as close to the river as possible, how will their deployment there help you so far north? Well, I think it's going to probably move that traffic uh, further west. And, uh, uh, you know, I think this is probably the, the mentality of uh, law enforcement is to probably move them as far west as the Trans-Pecos area, where they'll be easier to, to watch, not as much uh, brush and and uh, obstacles and, and thick brush and uh, oak tree canopy uh, that uh, kind of protects them from being uh, observed from the air and also detected by the Border Patrol. So. Your, your ranch, doctor, I understand, is really close to the Border Patrol checkpoint, which is still about eight, nine miles south of the city, the small city of Falfurius. Do the, do, up in Falfurius, where I believe you do have your practice up there, right, as a veterinarian? Yes. Yeah. Yes, uh, do, they, do they see a lot of folks that finally do actually do make it out of the harsh ranch country? Do they see these folks first in Falfurius? Is Falfurius the destination for water and food and some type of nourishment after that 60-mile trek through all that harsh terrain? Well, most of these people are not walking 60 or 70 miles. They're all paying organized crime, in particular the Zeta cartels and the gangs uh, that work for them to bring them up here and drop them off at the county line or south of this checkpoint. Okay. And and uh, th- this is the deal. And and uh, you know they're paying big big money. Central Americans are paying seven or eight thousand dollars each. Even the um, uh, people from uh, southern Mexico are paying three thousand or more. Wow. Uh, and and so forth. The Chinese are paying fifty thousand. Oh my. That's amazing. Dr. Vickers, thank you. We'll keep in touch. Dr. Michael Vickers, veterinarian from Falfurias and ranch owner, joining us on 710 KURV.